Good morning, and welcome to this uh, Lightning Community session, uh, Dreamforce 18. My name is Eugenio Gil. I've been doing CRM for more than 20 years. And in the past 10 uh, last years, uh, I've been working with Salesforce, uh, the last five for Accenture. I wanted to start this session uh, start, uh, reviewing some of the terminology that we uh, hear out there when we talk about UI design. Um, one uh, term that we hear often is continuous design. Another one is mobile first. And another one is responsive design. So what do they mean, really? When we talk about continuous design, we have to think about how do you move from one point to another? What type of application you're going to be running? What is the context? Is it something that you're going to be using in mobile? Is it something that you're going to be using in browser? Why do we do this? Because this is the key element that we need to account for when we design our user experience. When we talk mobile first, one of the things that we might not realize is we go jump into designer, right? We go just in the community builder. We start building all these crazy, awesome pages using all these different elements of the uh, that Salesforce puts out there for us. But then when we try to see how that looks in mobile, we realize that we start to have to water down the product. And in doing so, the client gets a little disappointed. But what if, instead of doing that, we actually focus on mobile, focus on the small screen, create a lean but very robust product, then when, once we get at that point, it's not anymore an afterthought. We have created really mobile first. Now all is left is when we actually progress to different uh, device sizes, we can actually start adding more and more features. Lastly, at some point, we're going to have to compromise. And the compromise means responsive design. What is responsive design? It's the ability for all the elements in our site to adjust based on the device size and the device uh, that we're working on and the orientation. There is a very good article in Salesforce site that talks about how content has to be fluid. One key important point about uh, responsive design is that we have to build our components, the, the minimum unit that we build, they have to be responsive. If we try to get a page responsive and use a page first design, we're going to have a lot of work to do. Instead, if we actually tackle every single one of our components and make them responsive, once we drop those components on the page, then the page becomes responsive as well. So finally, we got to the main course for this presentation. And these are going to be the three tips that I want to share with you today about how to make an incredible uh, Lightning Community user experience. So the first thing that I like to uh, design in my communities is what I call the community anatomy. What does that mean? The community anatomy is actually the body of my community. You can think about it when you create sitemaps, when you define how your pages are going to look like, the, how many sections each page is going to have. You don't have any content yet. You are defining the backbone. You are defining the containers of what your community is going to look like. The second tip is adopting a good and sound branding strategy. So we might have heard what the term branding out there. And, and, and some of you may ask what that is. Well, think about how brand identifies groups or individuals. Think about your football team color. Think about your X-Wing squadron color, right? Uh, you can brand using colors. You can brand using typography. You can brand using images. And you can also brand using or implementing a specific experience, right? So when you think about navigation in a community, you have many ways to do that. You can use the search. You can use a drill down pattern. You can use a free for all pattern. Last but not least, once we have identified the body, and once we have identified the branding strategy, we can now go and identify how we're going to be creating and populating that community. Right? We have the, the place to drop things. We have the things we want to drop. Now we have to create the content that are going to go inside those things. 
So again, when we think about the anatomy of the community, we have to focus on what we talked before. We have to focus about continuous design. We have to focus about. Uh, we have to focus on um, if we're going to be using that specific uh, element or page in mobile or not. You still are going to have to create a map of your application. If you don't know what things are, chances are it's going to take time for you to actually introduce changes and actually do the knowledge transfer to your clients. And then, of course, think about how those contents are going to fit in your page. You know that uh, Lightning communities allow you to create pages very similar to a content management system where you have your sectors in the page and you can actually drop uh, your components or uh, native components as well. And the key here is understanding that in order to be successful, you need to have a component first approach. So I'm going to try to do a demo here. Bear with me. And let me go here and move this over here. All right. So I started this community using the, the blank template. And then I switched to the beautiful Jepson um, community theme variation of it. So the first thing I did is, OK, I like this concept of hero. The hero is the big banner at the top. right? And in a hero, you can put a lot of contents. But I wanted, my, my client asked me to have a double hero, because he saw that in, in a different website, he liked it very much. So I took the time to create one theme template that is called here. the Twin Hero header. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to change the theme for this page to that theme variation. So the only thing I had to build here is the page layout template. In the page layout template, I created this concept of a double hero where I can actually drop contents on each one of the sides and then have my contents underneath. But honestly, if we talk about heroes, maybe a better way to show it would be something like this. I'm going to go back to the presentation now. Give me one second, please. All right. So. Now let's talk about the branding. Remember, I say, say uh, we talk about three tips. One is the community anatomy. You saw how I could use the different page layouts and create my own variations of those page layouts. Let's talk about branding now. So we talk about branding as changing the color, changing, changing the fonts, changing the way things look, making it personable uh, to, to represent a group or an individual. So how, what tools do you have in Salesforce to be able to do this? You have the ability to use the branding panel in the Community Builder. The next level of that, you can use actually uh, what is called the default tokens. Default tokens are separated in community-based and force-based. And you have every th single thing, every single styling rule that you have in uh, Lightning communities and Lightning experience capturing those tokens. So you can actually add code to your code base and be able to do that. So. Once you have exhausted all possibilities with the branding tokens, then you move to the next level, which is actually start writing your, your, your own CSS rules. And there are several options to do that. You can write CSS in your lighting components. You can write CSS in your pages. 
or you can write CSS at the community level in the branding panel. And then for when branding is not enough, there is a, a, an extra, an additional concept that is called skinning or theming, which is actually completely redirect the, f the way that elements show on the screen. It's not just the color, it's also the shape and the behavior. Go back to the demo now. So, talking about branding, and I have this concept of browser elements that you see as cards here or, or tiles. Uh, they have a, an image, a, a caption, and a description. And I'm going to go here. And using the branding palette, use that as a way to style my components. Now, keep in mind, these are custom components. However, I'm leveraging the, the native tools, the branding native tools of Salesforce communities to be able to get a completely different experience. So think about if you create your core assets base, then you can actually deploy that multiple times and change the way it looks. So remember that I talked about skinning before. So as you can see here, these cards look pretty much consistent with each other. However, I'm using that idea of skinning to make them look the same way. The actual cards, each one of those cards are completely different. If I turn off that skinning, each card looks completely different. So now you can actually add different shapes to your elements in the community without having to write code. You just have to include that in the code and then apply this concept of skinning to make them work for you. I'm going to also show you guys a few other ways that you can implement skinning and branding with the themes. I have here the example that we were talking earlier today about how I could create an, a very uh, beautiful and, and, and self-contained mobile application. So, so this could be my browser view. I can use my uh, view mode here to switch to see how that's going to look in tablet. And I can switch here and it looks to look how is that going to look in mobile. Now, let's say that this client say, OK, this looks very really cool, but I, I need a little more pizzazz for the browser version. OK, so what I would do in that scenario is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create what is called a page variation. So now the page variation, I can duplicate the existing page. I'm going to rename it to desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and try to change or create a, a new variation of that page. So again, same thing that I had before. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this desktop page. And I'm going to change the theme to another theme layout that I have. There we go. So now without making this a lot complicated for mobile device, I have a completely different experience for the browser. And I can go here, and I can remove this image that I had before. I don't need it anymore. And I can go here, and now I can turn off the skinning for this. Now, that's my new browser site. And as I mentioned before, once you create one theme layout, you can now create multiple versions of the same things. I have, for example, 
this same thing in this page. I have the same thing, different images in this page. So now you can see how you can actually brand your community, not only with the fonts, not only with the, the layout of the way things look, but also with images. All right, let's go back to the presentation now. So the third and last part, we talk about the body of the community. We talk about the looks of the community. Now let's talk about the soul of the community, which is the contents. What am I going to put there? So new in Summer 18, you have uh, native contents. It's a very simple tool to use. You can actually create contents in your community the same way that I have the cards. You can create your own cards with native. Uh, this is my, my learning component, but you can use something very similar to create contents. Uh, I would say that native contents are good when the client is asking you to deploy a community in a very to a short time frame, or the client CMS strategy is not mature yet. When, when the client has an already existing CMS uh, content management system uh, that they want to share their contents from, you can use CMS Connect as well. To me, one of the things that I love the most about Salesforce in communities is the way that knowledge allows you to create contents and share those contents with multiple communities. And, and internal and external users alike. You can also have third-party um, app exchange content management system that you can integrate with your community. And you can actually create your own data source for those content as well. It's taken a, lot, a little more effort, but the, comp the components that I was showing earlier today, that's what they do. They abstract completely the source of the data from the presentation layer. So you can have all the variations in presentation that you want and all the data uh, sources in a different place. Just going to go real quick. And show you a few of these components live. So. This is one of our bold templates that is using the same type of technology, the navigation items, to show pages or options within the community. And I can even read from knowledge base and present the preview of the knowledge articles in this type of interface. The reason why I want to do that is sometimes if you have a search of articles, this article return, you don't know what you're looking for. You pick, you know, you pick one article. It's not the one you're looking for. You have a count on the views. With with this approach, you can actually show a preview to the user without having to count for a view when the user goes in. And of course, all the native tools that you would expect, like for example, going there, I'm going to vote for this article. Again, as you can see, everything is native here, nothing custom. So I'm going to go back to the home page. And I have the vote out there. So everything is tightly integrated, but at the same time, it allows you the freedom to select multiple data sources. All right, going back to the presentation. Here are the references that you can look at for more information about the topics that we talk about. Don't forget, uh, on Thursday, the uh, developer keynote. And this is it for this presentation. Thank you very much for coming here. Uh, if you have any questions, you can meet me uh, outside the uh, stage. And have a great rest of the week at Dreamforce. Thank you.